Good morning, family. Welcome back to Daily Prayer and Devotion. We're ready to get started. We're ready to go into our daily prayer. We want to say happy Friday to everyone. We're so thankful for seeing another day. Shabbat starts on this evening. I'm delighted to be back with you in prayer and supplication. Today we're going to be talking about the end of days. We're going to be talking about the end of days, which are up on us. We're at a time now where everything is being unleashed, and we must prepare ourselves and get ready for the end of days. We're going to be looking in the book of Job, the second and the third chapter, and we're going to be graced with the scriptures and glean through the scriptures, and and we're going to go into prayer, pray for covering, because we need to His divine covering over our lives at a time like this. Hallelujah. All right, let's get into it. We're going to be looking in the book of Job today. Chapter 2 and chapter 3. Hallelujah. We're so thankful for everyone uh, joining in with us. I hope this day finds you in good health. Hope all is well with you and your families. We thank you for everyone that's joining in. I hope we don't have too many technical difficulties today as we have had in the past. Hallelujah. All right, let's go ahead and get started. The end of days. Hallelujah. Joel chapter number 2. Joel 2. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand, a day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong. There hath not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness, yea, and nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap, like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble, as a strong people set in battle array. Before their face the people shall be much pained, all faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men, they shall climb the wall like men of war and they shall march every one on his ways, and they shall not break their ranks. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk every one in his path, and when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, for he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? Therefore also now saith the Lord, Turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning and rend your heart, and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. Who knoweth if he will return and repent, and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God? Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, Sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, and those that suck the breasts. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber, and the bride out of her closet. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar, 
and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their God? Then will the Lord be jealous for his land, and pity his people. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn, and wine, and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen, but I will remove far off from you the northern army, and will drive him into a land barren and desolate with his face toward the east sea, and his hinder part toward the utmost sea, and his stink shall come up, and his ill savour shall come up, because he hath done great things. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beast of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty, and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my Spirit." And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Hallelujah. Let's go before the face of the Most High. Because the end of days are upon us. Whether you're prepared or not, now is the time to get your life in order, to set your house in order. It's time to look over your life and take surveillance of your life, self-examination. For what is going to come upon this world What's coming upon the earth We must be prepared We must put ourselves Before the most high And be found at his feet Hallelujah Let's look away Father we thank you For another opportunity to come before you We thank you For how you have watched over us As we slumbered and slept on the last night we thank you for all your many blessings that you unload on us. You have been there for us time after time. And we want to express our appreciation for how you have been with us and how you have shown us your love and expressed unto us that you care. We thank you on today. We magnify your name today. And we glorify you and give you all the honor and the praise father we magnify your name and we lift you up because it's our duty we were created to praise you we were created to worship you we were created for your purpose that you might do and have your pleasure out of us your people we have not kept our end of the covenant we have deviated from so many things. But Father, your love have continued to draw us closer and closer. We thank you today 
And we magnify you today because you could have left us. You could have deserted us totally. But you have caused us to continue to come before you time after time. We have repented and swayed away and repented and strayed away and repented. We have been back and forth, back and forth. But Father, this time we pray that you give us the fortitude to remain in your presence, to remain before you as a people. All through the scriptures we have been up and down, up and down. But Father, we want to to stand firm. We want to express to you that we have a true love for your word and for your people. As we approach the end of days, as all of the things that's written in your word are preparing to be unleashed, we pray, Father, that you keep us, shield us, hold us up with your mighty hand. Help us that we might be productive in our way. We're looking unto you, Father. You're the author and you're the finisher of our faith. We can do nothing without you. We can't make this journey without you. Father, we appreciate you and we honor and we praise you on today. We're praying for those that, that are, are gathered on the line this morning. We pray for their families. We pray for their homes. We pray, Father, that you will cause them to see and recognize that we are in covenant with you. The covenant yet remains. And we have a portion to fulfill in the covenant. We thank you, Father, and magnify you. We give you the glory that you do, the honor and the praise. Father, we lift you up this morning. We pray that you look down upon that man, that woman, that boy, that girl, the person that is confused, don't know which way to go, don't know which way to turn. We pray, Father, that you will look and have mercy. Cause them to be able to see that there is a reason. Cause them to see that days of darkness are ahead. Cause them to see that they're going to need a place of security during the times to come. You have given us warning in your word. You have told us many times we have gone on as though we have all the time in the world. But Father, we see as the days are rapidly passing from one week to one month to one year, it's passing rapidly and quickly. And we are getting older, but not wiser. So Father, we pray for your people that we'll be able to do your good pleasure. Help us to understand the importance of keeping the faith. Help us to understand that, that we don't have all the time in the world that we thought we had. Help us to understand that we must be the intercessors of our household. That we must be the one that will pray for our children. That we must be the one that will cover our families. Because we are the one that's connected closer to you. So give us the fortitude to be able to continue to pray for our household. Someone must be responsible. Someone in the household must be connected. Let it be those of us that take out the time to seek your face. Let it be us that make the sacrifice. Let it be us that are heard by your divine presence. Let it be us that come before your throne and seek your face. Father, we thank you, we honor and praise you, 
Let it be us that exhibit the faith that is needed to grace your throne. We're thanking you for your holy presence. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for the Holy Ghost that yet abide in our soul. Father, we give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. Watch over our children. Hold your hand of protection over them. Keep them in the time of trouble. We pray for our grandchildren that will no doubt experience even more than what we have experienced. We pray, Father, that you'll help them to be able to withstand, give them a foundation of holiness, give them something that they will need to be able to stand in this last day. Father, give us a, a broad understanding of what it means to serve you. Give us a, a more vivid understanding of the last days that we'll understand that this world is going to be persistent. The end of days mark an end of an age that we might be entering into a new era. So, Father, we're thanking you that you're preparing us to go into that portion of time or eternity that has been prepared and have been warned by your spirit and by your word that we might be ready to enter in. So, Father, prepare us for these days that are to come. Don't let us be caught up in lustful desires. Don't let us be caught up playing and, and having fun and being amused in this world. But, Father, give us a spirit of sincerity that we might be prepared that the day does not take us unawares. We're thanking you and honoring and praising your name on today, Father. Speak to us today. Speak to us words of encouragement. You told us in your word that days of darkness would come. Gross darkness to people. A darkness so thick that you could feel the darkness. Father, we thank you and we honor and praise your name. Help us. Help us to go through, be that glorious light so that we have something to be able to navigate in this wicked world. We're thanking you and we honor and praising your name today. Let these days be our time that we are lifted up. While the world is going through all of the chastisement and the punishment, for deviating from your word and not keeping your word, let us excel, let us experience your glory. As the world is punished for what they have done to your people, let your people be glorified in the earth. Let us be lifted up because you have written in your word that, that you have prepared a place for us, and you have prepared a day for us that we will be glorified in you. Father, that day is upon us. It's rapidly approaching. So help us, Father, to be able to be qualified to enter into it. Help us, Father, that we might be able to do and to perform of your good pleasure as we enter into these last days, as we speak, as we pray for divine covering, we pray, Father, for those that are confused right now, that don't understand, that don't know. Some have vowed that they would never succumb to your word. But, Father, we're, we're praying for them that they'll reconsider. We pray that they'll reconsider their words and reconsider the decision to, to, to get out of the will of the Father, that they might be able to repent and return. We thank you, Father, on today. It's going to be a terrible time for those that are alienated. It's going to be a terrible time for those that are on the outside of the ark of safety. So, Father, we pray for divine covering 
for those of us that are concerned, those of us that are seeking your face. We thank you today. We honor and praise your name today. We pray that you speak to us. Speak to us words of encouragement. Words that will help us to be able to see the importance of your salvation. We thank you today. We honor you today. And we glorify your name today. And we praise you for all the glorious things that you have done. This is the day that you have made. And we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. We're going to rejoice in this day. We're going to lift up our hands and lift up our voice and call upon you. We're going to thank you for all your divine provisions, food, shelter. We're going to thank you, Father, for health, strength. We're going to thank you, Father, for, for the activities of our limbs and for the capability to move about. Automobiles to ride in. Comfortable homes to live in. A bed to sleep in. We thank you for all these things sometimes that so many take for granted. We thank you for it, Father, and we praise you and we magnify your name. We pray that you speak to us this morning. Speak to us words that will bring about excitement, words that will cause us to look, know, and understand that this is a serious time for everyone. Whether they want to believe or not, help them to realize that this time is a critical time for all men. Hallelujah. It's time for all men to get their lives together. So, Father, we're praying, help them. Help us to prepare ourselves. Help us, Father, that we, we would not miss the mark. Help us to do that which is pleasing in your sight. We're thanking you and honoring and praising your name. Speak to us today, Father, and we will be fed. In the name of Yahweh Shai, that the world know as Jesus. We're going to say amen, amen, and amen. Somebody ought to give him praise this morning. Come on, let's give the Most High some glory. Let's give him some honor, and let's give him some praise because he's worthy. He has done great things, and they are marvelous in our eyes. And we're so appreciative of all the many blessings that, that he has given unto us and that he has spoken into our lives and and, and they are happening right now, all the blessings. As we see the end of time, we see the end of days. And many of us experienced the eclipse that took place on the other day. Where the, the moon stood in the place of the sun and blocked it out. <clears throat> And created a moment of darkness in certain areas of the earth. And it X'd out a certain area in our region. Signs in the heavens. Hallelujah. We're at the end of days. And there's no doubt a time that we must prepare ourselves. Sometimes what I've noticed about life, when trouble comes, it comes abruptly. It comes quickly, suddenly. All of a sudden, when you look around, it, trouble is upon you. And this is how the end of days are going to play out. The end of days is something that has to take place. But when we say end of days... We're speaking of a time where error changes, where everything that has been done is culminated and put into a blender and, and grounded and pounded to bring out the results of what have been done in the past. All of the evil, all of the debauchery, all of the things that have been perpetrated against 
the people of the Most High, and against the Father, the end of days will mete out the judgment for all of those things. And we as a people, we must be prepared to lift up our head. We must be prepared to, to go to a new level, to a new place. We must be prepared for him to, to raise us up. Hallelujah. And we're gonna look we're gonna look at this thing. Time is rapidly moving and we're not gonna be before you all day if y'all say the same. But we're speaking of the end of days. And we're gonna look at Joel chapter number three in verse one it says, For behold, in those days and in that time when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. What we're seeing here is that the end of days are in reference to his people. I often say, when you look at the first exodus, when you look at what happened to the children of Israel when they were down in Egypt, they were in a bondage and hard taskmaster working for free and, and, and doing all that they had to pay for, for breaking the covenant Hallelujah for, for being a hard headed people. Hallelujah for for just just allowing the enemy to reign over them. But they prayed. They prayed and, and relief came. But before the relief came, what happened? Egypt was torn apart. Egypt was was ripped. It was it was torn down by the Father. Why? For a people. So we see in this scripture it says, Behold, in, the, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. So he's going to bring it up again. He's going to throw it in their face. These are my people that we're talking about. This is why I'm getting ready to do to you what I'm getting ready to do to you. You tried to get rid of my people so many times. You tried... You tried to kill them. You tried to annihilate them. You, you tried everything in the book to try to get rid of my people, but they're yet in the earth and in the land. And now I'm going to bring them again. I'm going to show you and prove to you that it was all about them. Let us see what the word has to say. Hallelujah. When we look into the scriptures. I'm so happy for the scriptures. Somebody ought to give them some praise real quick. Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. Give them some praise. We, we, we ought to learn how to praise them at the drop of a hat. Joel chapter number 3 and verse 1, it says, For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. So we see that he's going to gather all nations, all nationalities of people, and he's going to point out to them who his people are in the face of all of the people, all the nations in the earth. I will also gather all nations. I will bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them. That don't mean he's going to beg them and be sorrowful. No, he's going to, he's going to plead the cause of his people. He's going to speak up for us. For his people. I will plead with them there for my people and for the heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for a harlot and so a girl for wine that they may drink. So he's, he's bringing up all of the atrocities that have been committed against his people that's what that's a part of the pleading for his people he's going to let you know what you have done 
to his people. And you have kept us in obscurity. You have kept us in a place where the world looked down upon us, but we are the ones that you should have been sending the billions of dollars to. You should have been building up the ghettos where the people of the Most High were residing. Verse number four. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre, Sidon, and all the coasts of Palestine? Will you render me a recompense? And if you recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? So you can't get out of this. What he's saying, if you try to recant and say, oh, we didn't mean to do it. He said, I'm going to swiftly return it on your head. This is a debt that has to be paid. There's no way around it. It has to be paid. The end of days are going to speak loudly. So many times that's why we urge and encourage the people of the Most High to position yourself. Because you can go down with your enemy. Hallelujah. If you defect on the Most High, you can go down with your enemy. All right, let's continue. Because ye have taken my silver and my gold and have carried into your temples my goodly pleasant things. Yeah, they have a lot of, of the artifacts and a lot of the things in their places, in their museums, and, 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 and in their places of, of, of honor. Our things. Hallelujah. All right. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the, the Grecians uh, that ye might remove them far from their borders. See, when we look at this thing, it's about a people. The children of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold to the Grecians that you might move them far from their borders. Now, we're not talking about uh, something that has already happened as far as this incident and this event. This is a future event. This is something that's going to happen. They're going to be brought down to the Valley of Jehoshaphat. That's, that's coming in the, in the end of days. Uh, that's an event that is going to happen. All right. Behold, I will raise them out of the place whither ye have sold them, and will return your recompense upon your own head. So he's going to pay everybody that had anything to do with confiscating and degrading the people of the Most High. If you have noticed, you have some people that already see this, already feel this, and they're trying to express some sort of, of forgiveness or, 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 or repentance as far as trying to express to us that they are sorry, but they, they haven't really just came out and totally said it. But by the time that the Most High get finished, there's going to be a lot of uh, apologetic spirits in the earth those that have any kind of sense in, in, in their being ought to be apologetic because the Most High is going to turn things upside down. Hallelujah. And I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hands of the children of Judah, and they shall sell them to the Sabians, to a people far off. For the Lord have spoken it. Now when you see that where it says, For the Lord have spoken it, that lets you know that this is a sure thing that is going to happen. It's almost saying, I promise you, I promise you, it's going to happen. And I will sell. And notice he said he's going to do it. Hallelujah. I will sell your sons and daughters to the hands of the children of Judah. Just like he allowed us when we broke the covenant, he ushered us into the place of, of, of our punishment. The same thing he's going to do to the people because they overdid our punishment. He told us 
to be whooped with a belt, but they got uh, barbed wire and whooped us with barbed wire instead of a leather strap. I will sell your sons and daughters into the hands of the children of Judah, and they shall sell them to the Sabians, to a people for all, for the Lord have spoken. And when you see that, that lets you know that he's not playing. When, when I speak these words, I speak of a truth. Number nine, proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war, wake up your, the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Now let me say something. You know, they're preparing this right now. They're, this is this has something to do with all of the, the the warrior robots that they're getting together. They're trying to to uh, formulate themselves. See this spirit uh, that that is in the earth. It it is not going to bow down. Uh, so so immediately and rapidly, it's got to be brought into subjection by the hand of the Most High because they're going to try to fight to the end. Hallelujah. So he said, proclaim this among the Gentiles. Tell them to go ahead and prepare war. Wake up your mighty men. Get a, do all your scientific uh, discoveries and uh, all of your new uh, uh, war tactics. Get all your stuff together. And let all the men of war draw near and let them come on. Let them come on out. Hallelujah. This is, I'm not speaking this. This is the most high speaking. This is the, 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 the God of glory. This is the Abba Yah, the Father, Yahweh, that's speaking. And then he goes on to say, Beat your plowshares into swords and your prune hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about thither, cause thy mighty ones, cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be awakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. So this is a time that he's going to judge all these people for all the things that they have done. The, the evil devices that they have done and perpetrated against the people of the Most High and folks in the world. This this latter day uh, 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 disease that they released in the earth that causes caused so much ruckus and caused the shutdowns and did all that. They're going to have to pay for that, for doing all the gain of function and making the disease worse than what it should have been. All of those things are going to have to be paid for. So he said, let the heathen be awakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down, for the press is full. The fats overflow, for the wickedness is great. So we see that he's, he's letting them know, all right, your time is up. It's time for me to reap. It's time for me to, to, to put on you what you put on everybody else. Hallelujah. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down, for the press is full. The fats overflow, for the wickedness is great. Hallelujah. Then he says, as we move on, hallelujah. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decisions. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. So now is the time... Uh, that is going to take place, many people are going to have to be there to pay for what has been done to the people of, Mo of the Most High. And I know that it may sound hard to believe that all of all these people in the whole w world and all of the, the rich folks and everybody that have done and perpetrated evil against the people of the Most High uh, going to have to pay. It says multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. 
for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decisions. Hallelujah. So, the scripture that many people look and read and say for the wealth of the riches, uh, the, the wealth of the uh, of, of of the the wicked, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the, the righteous. This is a time that you're going to see the greatest wealth transfer in history. Hallelujah. All of the gold that have been hoarded in the earth is going to be transferred to the people of the Most High. Hallelujah. That's something to think about. Not only will just the gold be transferred to us, but he's going to give us the capability to enjoy all of those things uh, that the world has amassed along with the glorious things that he have improvised and prepared for us throughout eternity. It's never going to end. You're going to be as gods. Hallelujah. That's what he's going to do. That's why the scriptures say, I have not seen, neither have ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. So there's going to be something very special for the people of the Most High, especially those that have prepared themselves, those that have, have put on the whole arm of God and have put on their beautiful robes of righteousness. The sun, the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. Hallelujah. So we see that there's going to be darkness. The sun and the moon shall be darkened. Hallelujah. It's going to be a time where darkness is going to cover the face of the earth. And we as a people... We're going to be graced with the light of the Messiah. Hallelujah. Isn't it a glorious thing to be here and experience this? The sun and the moon shall be darkened and the stars shall withdraw their shining. And the Lord also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem and the heavens and the earth shall shake. But the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. So it's all about a people. Listen when I tell you. It's all about a people. This treacherous time, this treacherous day that's getting ready to come up on the earth, it's all about a people. It's all about the wickedness that the folk have done against his people. And the uh, the, the, the wrong that they have perpetrated against all men. This is why we as a people must align ourselves. We must position ourselves so that we will not be on the wrong side of judgment. Hallelujah. Now let's continue. So shall ye know that I am the Lord your God dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall no strangers pass through her any more. So in other words, strangers have, have been taken on the characteristics and the titles and the identity of the true people of the Most High. While we have been squandering and squirming and scraping and trying to make it. This is a time that we will be elevated. Our true beauty will be shown. Hallelujah. It's going to be shown who we really are. All right, as we get ready to close, verse number 18 says, And it shall come to pass in that day that the mountains shall drop down new wine, and the hills shall flow with milk, and the rivers of Judah shall flow with waters and a fountain shall come forth out of the house of the Lord and shall water the valley of Shittim. Egypt shall be desolate 
and Edom shall be desolate, a desolate wilderness for the violence against the children of Judah, because they have shed innocent blood in their land. So try to tell me it's not about a people. Try to fix your mouth and say that, oh, he ain't doing that just for no, for them Negroes. He ain't doing that for them. Try to say it. No, this is for people. Let's look at that scripture again. Verse number 19, Egypt shall be a desolate, desolation, and Edom shall be a desolate wilderness for the violence against the children of Judah because they have shed innocent blood in their land. But Judah shall dwell forever, and Jerusalem from generation to generation. Didn't I tell you that it's never going to end? So some people, they think that we're wasting time. Some people tell you that you're missing all the fun. But we're preparing for the real deal where it's never going to end. It says, but Judah shall dwell forever and Jerusalem from generation to generation. Ju Judah and Jerusalem will be placed back together. You know, in the history and the time past when Jeroboam and Rehoboam had the separation and division, that's something that's been going on for, for the duration. Our people have always separated, couldn't get to get along together, families separated, something one want to be the head and all of this kind of stuff, away with all of that ignorance and foolishness. At this time, the scripture says that Judah shall dwell forever in Jerusalem from generation unto generation. For I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed. For the Lord dwelleth in Zion. So uh, there's still yet some cleansing that need to take place. That's why I keep on telling our people, you don't have everything. You don't know everything. You, you, sometimes we, we sit like we, we are y'all on the throne, sitting and pointing and trying to direct it like you ain't right, they ain't right. The, the scripture said, for I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed. So, so there is some work still going to have to be done on us. For the Lord dwelleth in Zion. Hallelujah. So family, we must know and we must understand that this thing is, is, is culminating, is coming to a head. We had that incident with the the eclipse that happened on the 8th a few days ago and many people saying they already seeing results seeing things happening seeing things occurring since that has happened well it's going to escalate whatever you are seeing whatever is taking place is look forward to to grow exponentially but let us get in the safety zone let us position ourselves that we might be in divine protection. In the book of Psalms, chapter number 91, it says, He that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So let us get in that place. Let us get in that position. Let us dwell there. The Bible says, shall dwell. That means you're going to remain. That's going to be like your home, a dwelling place. The secret place is a place that we should dwell. Hallelujah. All right, family, we, we're, we're not going to continue. We just wanted to give you a little bit of insight and remind you that we're in the end of days and remind you that all this trouble that's coming up on the earth is coming up on them as a form of punishment for what they have done to the true people of the Most High. Somebody ought to give him some praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. All right. We're getting ready to let you go. We're so thankful for everyone that, that have taken our time to join in with us. 
It's a beautiful thing that we can come together in prayer and supplication, seek the face of the Most High. It's a blessing. It's a blessing to know that, that He's going to bless us and recover all for us. It's a blessing for us to just be able to come together and discuss His Word and to pray together and find that common ground where we can feast together. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this word. We see the end of days approaching. We experience the eclipse that happened, which is a sign in heaven. So Father, prepare us for the coming days. Help us that we might be an instrument unto righteousness, that we won't allow the enemy to come in and flood us out, but that we will remain faithful unto your holy word. In the name of Yahweh, that the world knows Jesus. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. All right, family. That's all we have for today. We thank you for coming in today in the room of prayer. The end of days are upon us. Let's prepare ourselves. If you're not all the way right, try to get all the way right. Do whatever you can. Repent. Turn away from all ungodliness and all unrighteousness. Hallelujah. All right, family, that's all we have. We're going to say <clears throat> peace and blessing. May the Most High bless you, smile upon you, and keep you in the center of His will. We're going to ask those of you that can and will, if you're new to this channel, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to this channel and be a part of the prayer that we pray in the morning. Let Him speak to your heart. Pray along with us as we pray. Subscribe and hit the like button. Hallelujah. And hit the notification bell that you might get the lives and the uploads that we bring on a daily basis. Hallelujah. In the name of Yahweh, shine that the world knows Jesus. You say amen. All right, family, that's all we have for today. We're going to say peace and blessing until we meet again. May the Most High smile upon you and keep you. Hallelujah. Shalom.